Hey, I'm Alec, and today I'm going to show you how to 3D print with ASA filament. For most people in the 3D printing community, ASA is relatively unheard of. Now, ASA is derived from ABS and it improves upon it. And what it does is it yellows a lot slower than ABS. So you can print outdoor fixtures like garden hose attachments or planters or garden gnomes or really anything you'd want outside. ASA is perfect for that. And because ASA is derived from ABS, they print very similarly. So let's dive into what it takes to successfully print ASA. Step one, make sure your first layer is right. This is gonna be the same between any filament and any how to succeed video we've done. But the two main things are making sure the bed is level and then making sure the nozzle is the right distance from the bed. Because even if it's level and it's too close, that's not gonna work and too far, that's not gonna work either. So to level the bed kind of depends on the printer. Some use automatic bed leveling, some use screws on the bottom, others are through the software. Follow whatever instructions came with your printer to level the bed. Step two, print bed and adhesion. With ASA, much like ABS, you do need a heated bed. So if your printer doesn't have that, it's not gonna work out too well for you. If you do have that heated bed, there's four different things that you can do to help improve your print adhesion. Start off with a brim, about 15 loops, and that's pretty good. For a bed adhesive, I like to use Aquanet hairspray, and specifically Aquanet. Something in the formula just makes it stick super well. So all of these I printed with Aquanet and a bed temperature of 90 degrees Celsius, and it went just fine. But in other printers, I've had to go as high as 110 Celsius to get it to work. So play with your settings, see what works best. Maybe try 110 and drop it and see what works there but there's a range of what works. If you'd rather not have the entire inside of your printer coat in hairspray, you can also make ABS juice, which we have a video and an article on, so you have a much more controlled way of having a bed adhesive. A much less often used, but still viable alternative is to put capped on tape over your heated bed and put hairspray on that. What the capped on tape does is it helps evenly spread heat across the bed, ensuring you get a much firmer grip on your part. Step three calibrating your print temperature. I printed these parts at 250 degrees Celsius with a 90 degrees Celsius bed, and that worked really well for me, but I tried it on a different printer with the same settings, and that didn't work. What actually happened is I got a lot of under extrusion or minimal to no layer adhesion. So for that printer, I would have wanted to adjust the temperature up five or 10 degrees at a time to see what worked, but it depends on your printer. Adjust by five degrees at a time, see what works. If you have a print temperature too hot, that's much better than too cold too hot, you may get some ugly overhangs, but at least you have a successful part. Step four, enclosures. Since ASA is very similar to ABS, it also splits and warps like it too. So what you wanna do is build an enclosure for your 3D printer. Now that can be as simple as trash bags or even PVC and plastic sheeting like we've done, or as advanced as building a whole cabinet for your printer. The whole point is to just keep the hot air in and draft the air out. Whatever works best for you, whatever you can build, build that and you're good to go. Step five, layer cooling fans. Much like ABS, you don't want cooling fans on with ASA. So just turn them off and your prints will go much better. Step six, changing filament. All you have to do is turn it up to the printing temperature you're at. So 250 degrees Celsius, pull out the ASA, put in the new filament. So let's say PLA and just wait until the new color is completely pure. It doesn't have any residue from the ASA, any burnt plastic in there. Once it comes out clean, you're good to go. If you're changing from another filament to ASA, then again, heat it up to 250 and just push it through. Step seven, regular maintenance of your extruder. Extruder gears actually bite into the filament as it feeds it. And if you have any sort of under extrusion, what can actually happen is it will bite into it so hard that it fills up the teeth of the gear. And to clean those out, just use either a toothbrush or a brass wire brush, just something to really dig into there. You can even use an X-Acto knife to get finally into the grooves. If you notice any under extrusion, you're probably gonna to wanna to check your extruder gear first before you start any other troubleshooting. If you can't extrude ASA at all, well, sorry, you may have a clogged nozzle. To unclog it, we do have another video which you can watch here. And that's all there is to it. Hopefully there's enough here for you to start printing your own planters and outdoor fixtures in ASA. If there's any filament you're struggling with, let us know in the comments. I'm Alec from Matterhackers, thanks for watching. Thank you for watching. If you liked that, subscribe to our channel to keep up to date with all the latest videos. And don't forget, go to matterhackers.com to shop for everything 3D printing.